Uh, well, now we have time for a Q&A. &A. And um, I think the, the procedure is going to be through uh, cards that will be distributed to uh, those of you who want to formulate questions. And then the cards will be passed to me. And um, I will uh, read them out to the panelists. Um, while you're getting started with that, uh, let me then go ahead and ask the first question. And uh, the first question to the panelists I have is the following. I have, uh, you know, one of the challenges that uh, CK had uh, formulated to us, you know, in the several opportunities that I was lucky enough to, to, to listen to him uh, live, was the, uh, he said that one of the things that he had found is that you need a dramatic cost reduction in order to, to service the BOP. And he was talking about uh, a cost reduction in the order of 10 times, you know, lowering the cost of production of the product by uh, my order of magnitude of 10. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, whether, uh, you know, how realistic that is in this context or not, but the question is a bit more general. What have you found is the biggest uh, challenge in reducing cost in the services that you have, uh, that you are providing? Can you uh, perhaps mention one major challenge that you have faced and how, and what are you doing to deal with that challenge? Erin. Certainly, um, well, for the Qualcomm perspective, um, you know, our business model is largely based on licensing, um, the intellectual property that we develop. And so in developed countries, um, our chipsets are quite dynamic, multimedia, um, and there's higher returns, certainly, for that. And that's where a majority of our focus has been spent on the last um, 20 or so years. But really, now that we're starting to recognize the um, huge amounts of business opportunity in the emerging markets, we're realizing that we're going to have to adjust, and rather than continuing to add all of these complex features, that what we need to do is figure out a little bit more about what are the basics. Um, certainly, knowing that we want to go beyond voice and just SMS, that there's features from um, you know, the, the data services, the GPS, the, the camera phones, and all of these things that are still important. Um, so we've had to work with our partners, um, from the handset manufacturers to the 3G operators in the countries, to be able to help achieve this low-cost handset. Um, so I talked a little bit about, you know, there's, there's the low-cost handset, like the candy bar phone, which has all the basic, very basic components of the, like, the black and white screen and nothing fancy. But in order to be able to move up into this data space, the devices do need to have a little bit more complexity than that. Um, so what we've been able to achieve over the last five years is working with those partners to drive down those component costs and be able to come up with a low-cost feature phone that can accomplish some of these things like these applications and services that we've developed. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I would say that uh, to uh, cost reduction, uh, the first thing that, uh, that I would mention is, uh, is basically the, the cost associated with the, the problems, interruptions, even outages that the, uh, so to say, the informal grid uh, uh, generates or produces, you know, in the, uh, in, in the, in the distribution uh, grid. You know, I would say that that means a lot of things, you know, uh, mobilization, uh, outages. Uh, so that, that's, that's, I would, that's, that's the first cost reduction, you know, I would really mention. That's very important. Because <clears throat> to, trans to, 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 to extend to, or to transfer uh, the uh, operational solutions, uh, uh, administrative solution, commercial offices, uh, uh, crews. Well, that's, that's very hard to, 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 to get a cost reduction in those functions, you know. They're very difficult, you know. And even they are higher, you know, because uh, if, uh, you're, not, you're not working on a, in a familiar uh, streets or households, you know, so. But basically, the, uh, what, I, what I mentioned, you know, I, I would say that that's, that's the most important. I guess for us, uh, one important learning was that in some cases you have to throw away the book. Be able to make sure you're going to be able to get that quantum improvement. You cannot rely on the conventional elements or traditional ways of doing things. Like on the water distribution side, you are taught that to assure yourself of greatest reliability, you have to have multiple point supply and multiple point outflows that will not work. I think what we had uh, effectively done was to go for the non-conventional, 
single point supply, community engagement, so that the community is going to be just as committed to the reduction of system losses that you're going to be having as an objective for that community. In exchange for the reduction in system losses, they get 24-hour supply. Uh, I think even in so far as the real estate industry is concerned, we know you cannot do those objectives and get the desired quality level by using the conventional hollow block system. We are now going to be implementing the latest technology as well to see to it that we're going to be able to have <coughs> cast in place type construction methodologies. So there's consistency in terms of the product because we have to endeavor that even the base of the pyramid product is going to be just as good as what you have. It won't, won't have the granite floorings and the carpets, of, of course, it will be plain cement finish, but would have to provide for exactly the same level of structural strength. Thank you very much. I think we have about five more minutes, so um, I would like, I will ask you to, to keep, maybe uh, keep your answers as brief as possible so that we can get some more questions in. Uh, the next question I have for you is, uh, uh, can you tell us where and who in your organization uh, initiated this uh, change, you know, these initiatives that you have described of uh, working uh, with the BOP? Uh, yes. Well, um, mine is a great story, but I will try to keep it short. Um, I actually have an older sister who also work, works with Qualcomm. She's been there 10 years. Um, and she studied at the UCSD International School um, for Pacific Rim Studies. Um, and so she did a lot of international business development and um, government affairs and actually realized um, as she was out meeting with all of these regulators and policymakers and talking about the value of 3G technology that, that Qualcomm didn't really have any firsthand experience in what we were doing in these emerging markets. And so she went to our head of government affairs and said, I think we should challenge all of our counterparts across the world to come up with a program that incorporates a nonprofit organization, a local 3G operator, and the local government organizations and create these um, innovative programs to help service <coughs> the underserved community members. Um, so it, it was within the family. <laughs> I had not my family involved in, 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 <laughs> in the process. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, years before, uh, two or three years before the, we, we started with this, this, this uh, initiative uh, in, in EDC, <clears throat> we, we started a, 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 a profound transformation of the commercial area. Uh, it was very successful. <coughs> we reduced the number of commercial offices and, and through a lot of systems, uh, process, uh, uh, so, so we was in a kind of good momentum, you know. Uh, the company was in a good momentum. The team was uh, kind of uh, uh, was, uh, eager to have more success. And uh, so, it, so the team was looking for, okay, what to do now? Basically, the people that run the, the, the commercial area. <coughs> so uh, in a lunch, this really happened a lot. I'm not going to say who was in the lunch, you know. But during the launch, uh, somebody will say, okay, mention okay, now, now the commercial area has been, has been improved a lot. What about the, what, what about the, um, the barriers? Uh, then somebody in the, in, in, in the, in the table will say, okay, let's do something. Let's, uh, let's produce 50% uh, of the bill. Let, let's, uh, do, let's apply a new tariff for those uh, potential customers with a 50% of reduction. Then somebody else and in the table said, no, no, that, that's not the approach, you know, that, that's, that's not business, you know, okay? Let's, let's, let's work it out from the, from the bottom, you know. Don't, 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 don't jump to the, to, to the, to the roof, to the, to, to the tariff. Let's see how, they talk about process, how, how really to, 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 to change our own mentality. From a problem to a market, from a problem to a market. So that's that's how it. Uh, so basically, it was the uh, it was the, uh, the consequence, not calculated, of a period of success that had nothing to do with the with the Faber, the, 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 the low income segment. That success kind of infected, positively extended to. to Okay, I think when you see the, when you saw the 1997 chart that indicated the problem of Manila at that time, 
you, know, you, you immediately know that you're not going to be able to meet your service obligations to the government as provided for the, in the concession agreement if you don't get to address the base of the pyramid problems. You've got to be able to come up with innovative ways by which you're going to be able to connect everybody and improve the levels of service. So in a large way, you would credit government for coming around with fairly stiff targets. Very difficult. And fortunately, after we've seen that, I think that was the great realization on our part that we saw that, hey, the poor, if you treat them well, they will pay. We have 99% collection efficiency. And they are well behaved, and they will help you. And that is why I think it was so gratifying. And in turn, it enabled us to be able to apply those learnings in the other parts of the business that the conglomerate was involved with. And, and that was really how we have now been progressing. And maybe the added element that I'd like to add is really the fact that you have to also get people of like minds. It's important that you have that corporate vision from the top, from your chairman of the board, which we fortunately have. And then to make sure that as you staff each of those product segments with your specific organization, the people that you will have there will have the same level of commitment, not just on the bottom line, but with a genuine desire to come around with products that will be of great service to that market segment. Mr. Aquino, uh, I, as a follow-up, you mentioned government here several times, public-private partnership. Uh, a very interesting question here we have is to what extent have you, in your initiatives, relied on uh, financial support from either the government or international donors uh, in pursuing these initiatives? Have you had to uh, recor use recourse to, those, to that kind of financial support, or have you been able to do it uh, on your own? Okay, I, I think the whole objective of privatization, and, and frankly, this is probably one way by which the national government had managed to reduce its deficit levels, is to make sure that this is going to be a purely fully cost-recovered endeavor. Okay, so the tariff setting mechanism is premised on us being able to correct, to pr properly collect all of the investments we're going to be putting in. And truth of the matter is that maybe if you make a, a P&L by product segment, you probably break even or lose a little when you serve that sector. But you make all of it, or 90% of your money, on the basis of the higher end and the middle income segment, which is something that's provided in the concession agreement. Because tariff is on the basis of consumption levels. So the lower the consumption level, the lower the tariff per cubic meter. And the higher the consumption level, which as we know, the higher end population will consume more. So I think it was a good way. And at the same time, again, in fairness to the government, they put in place the right regulatory framework so that we can collect from cost consumers whatever we have invested plus an adequate return. Okay, and uh, for Erin, another question. Uh, how do you, to what extent do you realize, do you incorporate in your initiatives uh, that you described uh, local income generation? That is, uh, how much do you try to, uh, to uh, keep within the communities in which you work in terms of uh, you know, giving them uh, opportunities, not just as, as, as customers or future entrepreneurs, but also as uh, maybe you know, people who contribute to your value chain of, of delivery? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so really the goal of our initiative is to ensure that these pilot projects that we're implementing have the ability to be locally sustainable. Um, and then ideally we would like to see them scale um, and be able to be replicated even in different provinces. Um, and, and so the important thing about that local income generation is that we're helping to create business, whether it's for the local social enterprise RUMA in the Indonesia example, the 3G operator, Bakri Telkom, um, and or the, the actual village phone operators in their communities. So that's actually um, one of the, the main focuses. Um, and, and maybe to give one other example, um, in, in the Philippines, we've got a very successful project with smart communications, with the Department of Health, with USAID, and with the local government units. And really where the direction of that program is going is all of those local stakeholders are now able to see the value um, that they, these projects are able to give back to the community and are now finding finding um, their own way to, to find government funding or um, to help increase that local income generation. 
Thank you very much. I'm afraid we are out of time. I want to thank all of you for your uh, fascinating questions, and sorry that we didn't get to all of them. Uh, but uh, above all, I, I, want, I want to ask you to please join me in thanking the panelists for this fascinating session. Thank you.